Rhea Ripley impressed on the international circuit, competed in two WWE Mae Young Classics, beat Tony Storm to become the inaugural NXT UK Women's Champ, and beat the unbeatable Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's title. Now, as the NXT Champ, Ripley heads into her first WrestleMania, defending that gold against one of the best in the business and an NXT alum, Charlotte Flair, April 4th or 5th, from their WWE training home, the WWE Performance Center Orlando. All that and this proud Aussie is just age 23. Amazing. Thank you, champ. You beat Storm. You beat Baszler. Now you got Charlotte Flirt Mania. Your thoughts? <laughs> Man, it's been absolutely insane. Um, to see how far I've come just in general in WWE is incredible. To go from NXT UK to NXT to now being the first NXT champion to defend their title at WrestleMania against no one other than Charlotte Flair. I'm pumped, dude. I'm, I'm so excited. What did you think when you heard about WrestleMania moving from the 75,000-seat Raymond James Stadium in Tampa to now an empty PC in Orlando? Um, so my first thought was like, damn. Like, that would have been super, super cool to be able to compete in front of 80,000-plus people. But to be going back to the Performance Center where I've spent the last three years of my life, uh, at the end of the day, it's still WrestleMania and it's still a massive, massive deal. And I'm, I'm so excited because whether it's in front of a live crowd or not, there's still people at home that they need this escape. Uh, there's so much going on in the world and we're legitimately stuck in their houses in some countries. So to be able to give them WrestleMania, which is legitimately too big for just one night. So we're doing it on the 4th and the 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the WWE Network. Um, to be able to give people at home that joy for two nights is incredible. And I'm, I'm so proud to be a part of it. How are you doing in coping with this pandemic? Um, I'm doing better than I thought I would be. Uh, when, when the gyms closed, I was definitely depressed because the gym is my happy place and I go there every single day of my life and I was lost without it, to be completely honest. So me and my partner, Kevin, we went to Target, we went to Walmart, we went to Dick's, we went to like every every shopping center that we could have to try and buy as much um, gym equipment as possible. And we've just been, we've been hustling because at the end of the day, like WrestleMania is still on, so I got to look good. <laughs> well, you've been doing so well so far in this amazing ride that you've had. It's great. Hey, with all that gym equipment, maybe you can open your own gym. Man, I would love that. One day I'm definitely, I want to open up a gym. Definitely. Hey, Rhea, how about your family and friends in Australia? How are they doing? Um, they're doing pretty well. Um, I think everything's starting to close down now. I haven't been able to talk to them over the last couple of days just because, like, we've just been so busy. Um, but they're doing all right. Now, WrestleMania, hosted by Gronk, will be two nights streaming on WWE Network and also available on pay-per-view. Rhea, have you met Gronk? Are you an NFL football fan? Um, no, I haven't met him. And I know people are going to probably hate me for this, but no, I'm, <laughs> I don't watch it either. Um, I don't really watch any sports, which is, is weird for me because I love sports. Um, I love to play sports. I, I haven't really been a massive fan of watching them, except for wrestling. I always love watching wrestling. But apart from that, I don't watch any sports. Well, I'll say this. The NFL is no Adelaide football club, right? The what, sorry? The NFL is no Adelaide football club, right? Oh, no. No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I love AFL. That's, like, yeah. I can't really watch it on TV. It's more of a, like, be there live and watch it thing. But AFL is... I'm sorry, America. I love AFL. <laughs> no pads, Rhea. There's no pads, no helmets. It's just go out there and kick ass like you do in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so Rhea, did you think because of the coronavirus and all that there may not be a WrestleMania? 
Yeah, there was definitely that doubt going through my mind. I thought that they were going to cancel it, um, which is, like, I think why this WrestleMania is so special because it is held in the performance center with only, like, the close set uh, of the central personnel in the building, but it's still going on and it's still going to be a huge, huge night for everyone. And obviously with no fans, no crowds, but... Does that resemble at all any of the smaller indie shows in Australia that you had to work, or no? Um, to be honest, it reminds me more of, like, a training match, <laughs> but with a lot more on the line. Because, like, even in Australia and the indies, like, there was still at least, like, a few people in the crowd where here, there is legitimately zero fans in the crowd. There is only the essential people there to, like, make sure that it's filmed and put out. But that's it. That's all we have. So, like, to be able to go out there and not have anyone cheer for me and make any noise, it's super, it's going to be super weird. Like, but I just got to remember that there's people at home that are making noise and making ruckus. And that's definitely going to be going through my mind. Rhea, what was wrestling like in Australia? Uh, it was. It was fun. It was a lot, a lot of fun um, to be able to travel around Australia with my my close friends that I met at the time. Like it was, it felt like a family, and I I absolutely loved that. It, everything was just like shenanigans, and it was just always a blast, no matter what. Well, you debuted in Australia in about 2013. So you were very young when you started in the pro wrestling business. Because of that, were there any challenges to overcome? Um, yeah, I did start at 16 years old, and I had my first match. I think it was still when I was 16. Um, there was definitely challenges in, in the way that everyone was older and stronger than me at the time. <laughs> but that was about it. Other than that, like... I always put the work in. I always tried my hardest to be the best at what I was doing, and I never stopped until I was the best. So for me personally, there wasn't too many struggles other than I wasn't as strong as I am these days. <laughs> well, you're very strong and very successful in what you do, which is a credit to you. But also, who do you credit and what do you credit for your success so far? Um, man, there's so many people that I could name off that have helped me over the years. Um, even just like starting back home in Australia for Riot City Wrestling, like I had the best coaches that I could have had um, within Matt and Chris Basso. They were brothers and they're the, they're the best coaches that I could have asked for. They, they saw something in me and then made me work harder than everyone in the room and I really appreciate them for that. Um, as for like coming here, like there's always people at uh, trainers at the performance center. People like Scotty Too Hotty. He saw something in me too, and he made me work, and he made made me happy every day, and and praised me when I was doing things wrong, and and corrected me when I was doing things uh, when I was doing things right, and corrected me when I was doing things wrong. You know, um, he was a big part of why my career in WWE is doing so well at this point in time. Um, other than that, people like Sarah Amato, Triple H, man, even my family, like to have them be there and just support me the pretty much the whole time. Like you couldn't ask for anything better. To have my dad legitimately drive me to training back home three times a week, sit in the car for an hour after training because I'd be too busy just like, rolling around in the ring or talking to people and have him put up with that. Like, there's so many people that I could I could name at this point. Well, one of those you mentioned was Scotty Too Hotty, Coach Scotty Too Hotty. I'm wondering, Rhea, have you ever had to do the worm? Um, <laughs> I haven't had to. I, I actually want to, though. Like, I haven't wormed in a long time. I don't even know if I can worm anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how is wrestling in Australia evolving? Because we are seeing more talent coming over here, WWE and other places from Australia. Yeah, so Australia, when I started, it was very, very small. Not 
many people knew about wrestling in Australia. Um, over the years, it's definitely been built up, and I think that's incredible because everyone in Australia has definitely worked their butts off for this, you know? They've, they've put the time and the effort in, and I'm so glad that they're getting the recognition that they deserve now. So a lot of them do come over here to America, and they do uh, work for a few different federations, and even some in WWE. And it makes me so happy to see that. Like, to go from, like, no one knowing that there was wrestling in Australia to, like, now having how many of us at the Performance Center, like, oh, God, I think there's, like, eight to ten Australians in WWE now. And I think that's... It's incredible, you know, to see people like, even a couple of the new signees, like uh, Bronson Reed and Brendan Vink. I watched them when I was growing up. I was in the crowd while they were in Australia, and I was there screaming for them, and now they're here with me in WWE, and I think that's insanely incredible. Oh, wow, you mentioned Bronson Reed, and when you said that name, it conjured up when NXT in Orlando had that Halloween show. And he dressed as Rikishi. And at the end of the show, you mentioned Scotty Tuhati before. Scotty came out and did the worm, and they had a whole good time at the end of that. <laughs> Dude, that was, that was so funny. I was definitely popping back. Oh, man, that was, that was insane. And that was such a cool night as well. It's just like, I love Halloween for that, because like everyone just gets to have fun. I even dressed up as Triple H. I did the whole entrance, the water spit, and everything. It was just... A crazy night. <laughs> that was so cool. That was your, your your portrayal was good too. But that's so great. Hey, listen, you're the first female Australian singles champion in WWE history. How proud does that make you feel? Oh, super, super proud. I never thought that I would see my name on that history line ever. Um, so to know that all my hard work paid off, and man, it's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Rhea, you've got such a cool look. How do you describe your ring gear, your look? Is it goth-inspired, heavy metal-inspired? Would you tell us? Um, it's a bit of everything, but I, I want to say definitely mostly heavy metal. Um, it's also just what I feel comfortable in, you know? So, like, I've mixed and matched a couple of things. Like, I've always loved studs and chains, always. Um... Me being me, I feel more comfortable in like a high top pants, which is why my pants go up so high. <laughs> I just don't feel comfortable with uh, showing like heaps and heaps of skin, you know, and I love the pants look, I love the boots look. Um, I got to get my back out there because, you know, I've worked hard for these lads and I need to show them. <laughs> <laughs> Rhea with that, and, and again, it's a different look. Are you a Motorhead fan? haven't listened to too much of them. Triple H is a big fan. You got to do it. You got to get the med. You're into metal. You got to get on the Motorhead bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I definitely need to like broaden my music taste because I, I get real stuck on like the bands that I've been listening to over the last few years and I just listen to them on repeat. I need to go out and venture and find new bands. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, also, Rhea, you do a hand gesture where you put your arms over your head crossed and make a sign. Is there any symbolism or meaning for that? No, that was just me doing some random stuff. Um, because I would always just put the, the devil horns up, just one hand, but Tony Storm does that too. And I was trying my best to not be like anyone. And also Becky Lynch does that. Like, so many people were doing it at the time, so I was like, I don't want to... I need to make it different somehow. Um, so that sort of just like pops into my head and I, I know it gets it worked. NXT Women's Champ Rhea Ripley, we're wrapping this up. Last thing for you, Rhea. Mercedes Martinez recently joined WWE. Somewhere down the road, what do you think? Man, I would love to. I actually was able to step into a ring with Mercedes in um, Perth, Australia. I think I was like 17 years old at the time, and man, she's so, so good. I would love to step into a WWE ring, uh, ring with her someday because, man, she's worked so, so hard for so long to be here, and I would love to share a special moment with her. 
And there you go. WrestleMania two nights, April 4th and 5th on WWE Network and also on pay-per-view. Thank you so much, champ. Go get him. <laughs> no worries, mate. Thank you so much.